Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode two of Chaos Reigns. This is a D&D 5th edition actual play stream taking place in the city of Ravnica from Magic the Gathering. So, hi guys, how are you? Good, good. Good, good. Sweet, sweet. So, you wanna, I know Zilmi, you had things you wanna plug, you wanna, you wanna tell us a little bit about who you are, what's going on in the world of Zilmi? Alright, so, I'm Zilmi, it's my stream. Welcome. Um, I'm the owner of Disconnect. We're a small community-oriented esports organization. Um, if you're interested in getting involved more with that, you can do exclamation point Discord in the chat. Also, I just wanted to announce that our merchandise store actually launched yesterday. That's where you can find this beanie, this baseball hat, this Letterman hoodie, and the the jersey that we're both wearing. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you. If you're interested in checking that out for yourself, you can do exclamation point story in the chat. Yeah, that's all I got. All right. Um, pushing for the win. I've literally got nothing. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, <laughs> all right. Well. Well, you you're gonna introduce yourself. Oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that a minute ago, and I was like, I should remember to do that, and then I forgot to do that. So, I am Kyle. I am uh, one of three co-hosts on the MinMax podcast, and I am the dungeon master for this stream. So, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter also below, um, and or check out the podcast, which is MinMax Podcast. Well, MinMax Pod on all of the socials except for Reddit. Um you can find us just by searching Min Max Podcast on any um, of your favorite podcasting streaming service things. So, yeah. Um, a couple things that we were going to address here. I know we got some feedback about my audio quality, especially being very poor last week. So I'm using a different headset um, today. Hopefully it's coming through a little bit clearer. Um, if not, well, I apologize again and working on getting some other options figured out but we will get those technical difficulties um worked out here soon we're hoping so um beyond that if you guys have other feedback other things that aren't coming through clearly or um you know things that you questions you have about how the game works how the chaos deck is run uh things like that feel free to hit us up um jump into the chat while we're streaming um at least nathan and aaron will be monitoring that to some extent i'm a little busy with you know all of the monsters and the story and the, you know, juggling that is dungeon mastering. But um, we're happy to answer those. And yeah. So, are we ready, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. are, are we prepared? Sweet. So last time on Chaos Reigns, we were introduced to our two heroes, uh, Place Holder, the Goliath of the Boros Legion, and Zardu Hasselfraun of the is it league uh who is a half elf nope full elf right you're a full elf high elf um high elf well right but full yeah elf, anyway yeah high <laughs> elf <laughs> he's an elf <laughs> um wizard so yeah um these uh two intrepid new heroes uh have essentially been tasked uh as a part of a collaboration with the Selesnia Conclave um, under the guidance of Peretnia Vorkos, a centaur, uh, to kind of work together on this inter-guild collaboration project that's come about uh, kind of as a means of, of rebuilding some trust between the guilds after the guild pact was broken um, some 70-odd years ago, 75 years ago. Uh, so you guys were uh, kind of dragged out into the field in one of the rebel belts in the 6th district of Ravnica. And you were sent out, you kind of split ways with Peretnia for a, a time to kind of just wander around. You've heard of some, some activity happening in this area, um, especially with the Gruul. And you guys went exploring around uh, the, the Rebel Belts here. Um, in that process, you discovered um, movement within the, the Rebel, only to find a boar, which leapt out and attacked you, and very strangely managed to split into several boars and then not so many boars and then several boars again. Um, and you were able to finally finish it off only to kind of realize that clearly there's some sort of odd magic um, in place on this boar for it to be doing what it was doing. You 
skinned the boar, harvested the meat, um, brought it back with you, and met up with Pretnia again. Um, and you had a short discussion with her, and she suggest suggested that uh, it would be a good idea to kind of do some exploring and figuring out who was conducting uh, whatever type of magic it was that was being used to uh, alter the boar in that way. And so you guys camped out there in the rubble belt for the night, and now you awaken the next morning, um, and you are both immediately greeted by um, the sounds of, of busyness as you look around and you realize Pretnia seems to have already been up for a while. She is um, cooking breakfast, and you smell uh, the faint uh, sense of... Uh, you, you hope for a moment that you're going to smell, you know... Nice crisp, crisp bacon, um, maybe some some breakfast potatoes, that kind of thing. Uh, not quite what greets you. Um, instead, it sort of smells like a stew of sorts, um, especially that that distinctive smell of, of cooking vegetables. Um, and you recognize with a maybe a, a moment of, of begrudging acceptance that she is a member of the Selesnia and is probably not. Uh, in her instance, overly inclined towards eating meat. Dang vegans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is how I described the Celestia. Um <laughs> Don't be a life church hater. Mm. All right, so uh, <laughs> uh, can I have some? I'm hungry. So you guys, you get up, uh, Brittany uh, says good morning to you, and you um, have some of the stew. It's actually better than you expect. It's, it's well-seasoned. It's not bad. It tastes pretty good. Um, maybe not as porky as you would hope, but it does the trick. It's breakfast. <clears throat> All right. So uh, where were we heading off to today? Well... We do need to figure out what uh, the deal is with this boar. Now, if I remember from last night, you said there wasn't... You had no other clues about what was happening? Just the Golgari. Yeah. Just, just saw the... Yeah, nothing around other than the boar. Well, that Some junk. Unfortunate. It's probably the Golgari. I still don't understand your predilection with blaming the Golgari for everything. Have you ever met a Golgari you could trust? Several, actually. Uh, there's a part of, I mean, the whole purpose of this project that I've started is to ensure that the guilds, all the guilds, can work together. Maybe. I don't know, because see, the, the spell seems like something that Izzet would do. But I haven't heard anything about it. Hasn't been like well, you are a member of that league. Exactly. Like so, I'm trying to think of who, what other guild might do something like that, or if it's a guild at all. This is true. It could very well just be rogue agents, ungilded members out here, trying different things. We need to. Uh, we'll need to explore <clears throat> and look around. Um, I've heard tale of a gruel camp out in this area, but I haven't actually seen signs of it yet myself. Might be a place to start. About the only people I would think would be out in this area. It'd be a good spot to go. Yeah. Um, sorry, hold on just a second here, guys, because I think I am getting dinged repeatedly, which I'm pretty sure that means my sister's headset might be dying. So let me see if I can find a cord real quick. I apologize. All right. So once again, if you're looking to get some merchandise like this, <laughs> exclamation point store in the chat. <laughs> it's also, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, it'll be down in the description. Every episode will be up on the tube. Yeah, boy. Uh, oh, I just have a bag of goldfish back here. Are those favor blasted? Because that's going to get cheese all over your keyboard, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Like what pants are for. We're OK 
Okay, the beeping has ceased. All right, so um, <clears throat> as you guys um, begin to, um, you, you finish your breakfast, uh, you begin to kind of break camp, um, and as you do so, you glance up to the sky and you notice um, there appears to be a white bird approaching you, um, kind of making a beeline straight for the, the three of you standing there in the clearing. Um, and as it as it gets close, um, you recognize very distinctly uh, on its it, it's it appears to be kind of a snowy owl, and it has this hook um, with an azorius crest kind of placed right above its, its forehead. Um, and the the creature flies directly over to Peretnia, and she she holds out an arm and as, as it perches there, um, and she you can see she pulls um, what appears to be a, a piece of parchment from a sleeve on the bird's ankle. Um, and she and she reads it for a moment. And, um, it seems I might actually need to leave you. The this messenger is just uh, uh, my contact in the Azorius is letting me know that their guild has gone on high alert. Um, I, uh, there's no details here. It's a very short message, but I, I'm concerned as to why the guild would suddenly need to uh, I don't know this is disconcerting um, <clears throat> I may need to go and and see what's going on uh, at the, the Senate building will you the two of you be okay if you if, if, if I leave you to go explore this mystery yourself for a while yeah I think so Wonderful. I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I hate to, to keep leaving you like this, but I the last thing I want is for something to be happening, and, and there's clearly a reason that they're sending me a message about it, so I will go and check in there, and then try and get back to you as quickly as I can, but if... Okay, let me write down my phone me, number. If I don't find you, then uh, <laughs> please, please just... Uh, <clears throat> And come back and, and, and find me. I, I'll be either be at the Senate or at the uh, uh, Selesnia Guild office in the in the district. Sounds good. Good luck. All right. All right. Um, with that, she kind of hefts a, a pack over her back, and um, she starts to gallop off uh, back towards the city proper uh, where you guys came from. And you find yourselves left alone on a bright new day in the Rebel Belts. So... You have a mystery on your hands. What's your objective? What are you going to, to the Gruel to Camp? Wait, do we know where that is? To the Gruel Camp. Um, you do remember uh, when you were out and about yesterday? I can't remember. I think it was you, Aaron. Yeah. Slash Zardu, who climbed to the top of the the Boros, mm -hmm. the former Boros Tower, mm -hmm. and you did see. You saw the boar. You had also seen off in the distance um, the telltale signs of smoke that you figured were from a camp of some sorts, and it's pretty reasonable to assume that would be a Gruel Camp. To the camp. All right. Um, go ahead, again, just for the sake of rolling some dice, give me a survival check to see just how well you remember your way through here and see if you can navigate back to the area that you saw the day before. Thirteen. Thirteen, all right. I actually um, have dice this week, so hopefully I can roll a bit hey. faster. Nice. <clears throat> so you, um, the two of you set out, and it's... It's kind of slow going, not only because the terrain is very difficult, but also because you you're not super familiar with this type of work. Uh, you know, the the whole process of tracking and, and picking your way through certain environments um, is is a little on the foreign side for you. Um, but you do manage it. You you have a, a fairly decent sense um, of where you're at, and it's pretty easy that that Boros Tower kind of stands above everything else and makes for a pretty decent landmark. So after a while, you do get to the point where you um, see the the signs of smoke in the distance and they do gradually um become clearer and clearer as you get closer um are you guys are they going to just kind of march right up would you like to kind of sneak towards the camp what do you want to do wait let's see let me double check what my spells here are <clears throat> and it, just as a note um, for both of you, actually, if you want to change any of your spells, um, because you did take a long rest, um, you can adjust, you can prepare different spells for today than you had. Oh, yeah, how many are we supposed to have prepared? Because I didn't have them marked. 
if you scroll the look at the top of your spell sheet, it'll tell you how many to prepare each oh, day. Oh, yeah, four. Okay, <clears throat> we'll go with that one. So if you want to just make any little adjustments, go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, that one. I think I'll leave mine as is for now. And that one. And just as a note, any time that you guys take a long rest, which is considered a rest of um, eight hours or more, uh, you can go back and, and change your spells. Um, just in case you guys didn't do this also, um, any hit points that you lost are regained after a short rest, so you should, you should go back up to whatever your maximum hit point value is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm for I forgot about that. <clears throat> I already was. And then almost all of your abilities should reset on a long rest, which I don't think you guys really used anything. Um, but I know, Nathan, for example, you were talking about Stone's Endurance as a Goliath ability. Um, yeah. That one actually reset, resets on a short rest, um, but you would also reset that after a long rest. Okay. So. All right. So we good on spells and everything? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. All right. So you didn't answer my question, however. Are you guys... I'm going to walk behind him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I I'm going to do it sneaky, I think. Are you going to do it sneaky? Sure. I mean, he's he's following you, it sounds like. So <laughs> if you're sneaking, he might be sneaking too. Wait, so I if... line the Goliath that scares me. All right, yeah, I guess yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sneak. Okay, go ahead and give me a stealth check. And Aaron, you too, if you're doing the same thing. Okay. 17. Ooh. Wow, nice. I got a 10. This one's sneaky Goliath. 10? Okay. So can um, I just, like, he can just carry me in his arms? So he's... Because <laughs> he's sneaky? So... If we do that, we combine our scores, right? So we got a 27. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, he said yes. Lucky for you, your massive Goliath friend is actually... Uh, this is the second time in a row, too, because didn't you sneak last time and you were... Wait yeah, you snuck up on the boar, and you were quieter. Uh, yeah. You were, you were a very nimble half-giant. I guess so. <laughs> so, you guys do... Um, you managed to, to sneak up towards the edge of the camp, um, and as far as you can tell, nobody's really caught sight of you at this point. Uh, you can give me a perception check if you would like to kind of... Get a sense of what you can yeah. see. Yeah. Ten again. Nice. You're consistent, if nothing else. Only yeah, eleven. I guess. Okay. Um, <clears throat> from your vantage point, it's kind of hard to make out uh, what's going on in the camp. Um, there are a couple of kind of rough tents and things that are obscuring part of your view. Um, but you're able to, to figure out that there's probably somewhere in the neighborhood, you'd guess, two dozen tents, give or take. Um, and you don't know exactly how many um, different, uh, I want to say people, there are a wide variety of creatures in the multiverse, so oh, you can't tell quite how many creatures might be in the camp, but you would guess upwards of 50 at the very least um, that might be a part of this clan. You see um, quite a few goblins, you see Viashino, which are lizard folk for anyone who isn't familiar. Um, you also see a, a number of humans um, and one or two ogres, and also um, in D and D terms they would be Etans, but uh, they're basically like two-headed ogres um, that are wandering around as well. So pretty wide variety of creatures. You don't think anyone's really caught notice of you just yet. You see, I mean, you can kind of hear the sounds of it. Sounds like there's brawling or something going on. Um, just out of view past some of the tents. There's kind of a, a general clamor and commotion. Sounds like a gruel kind of thing. It does. <laughs> it does indeed. All right. Do we want to sneak further? I mean, you're like, I'm riding you, so wherever, <laughs> wherever you're going, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want me to do another check? Um, nope, we'll just we'll carry on with the same stealth check for now. So what what are you trying to do? Where are you headed? Go towards the brawl, maybe. Yeah, okay. that's sound. Um, you uh, just to let you know if you're going from what you can hear, it sounds like you'll have to kind of cut through part of the camp. So there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna get spotted in that process. Mm, okay. Um, so it's up to you. I mean, you you're welcome to try that and try and just kind of like sneak between the tents. I'm just. 
Wanting is there any way to see it? Is there any way to go like around the outside edge of the camp and still Wait, sure. maybe see Wait, it? Wait, hear me out. Hear me yeah. out. I could oh, like okay. press. Please don't try and build another spell skate. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> now is really not the time. I could use like prestidigitation over the in the what? <laughs> <laughs> over in the distance and make like some prestidigitation. Yeah. yeah, that thing and like make some sparks over in the distance. Everybody look that way and then we book it. Or or just or, be or or different idea. Mage hand goes up and taps everybody on the shoulder, and then we book it. <laughs> <laughs> no, and and we, you sound like an is it. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of strike me as more of an is it goblin than an is it elf. <laughs> <laughs> is it too late to change races? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Did you just assume my race? <laughs> You might have to go visit the Simic if you want to mix things up there. <laughs> All right, you. I don't know. You could. I do guess. That if I guess we could sneak around the edge. Fine, whatever. Let's be boring. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you do it. Go. Go for it. I'm all about exciting. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. Fine. Let's let's do it. Let's prestidigitation. Okay. Yes. That was right. That was better. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll what just. What form is your prestidigitation going to take? Is uh, should we do? Should I just do a shower of sparks over over there? That works. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. So you're just going. How? What is the range on prestidigitation? Oh gosh, no, I'm doing it. <laughs> um. <laughs> prestidigitation. Range. Ten feet. Ten feet. Oh, that's kind of rough. Are you sure about that? That's what it says. I find that hard to believe. Hold on, let me let me let me double check this because right. spells are almost always at least somewhere in the thirty to sixty range. Prestidigitation. No, you're right. It is only ten feet. All right, so maybe we should do Mage Hand because it has a range of thirty. That's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go Mage Hand, and we'll just kind of throw it around in front of people so they see it, and then just. It'll take off one direction as far as it can go, and then we'll go the other direction. Okay. Where have I seen this move uh, before? Keep in mind, this doesn't sound at all like the very first time we played Dungeons and Dragons. No, not at all. <laughs> okay, so keep in mind. The spell only has a range of 30 feet, which means any time the hand moves outside of that 30-foot range, if you try to move it outside of that, it will dissipate. Right, so we'll just get in front of people so, and then go 30 feet, right? Uh, okay. So wait, 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 wait. Okay, so I'm assuming we're – I'm going to I'm gonna use the camera here. We're here. There's a bunch of okay, people, yeah. like, spotted around here, right? And we're trying to get over here. Right, in front of you. There, The camp is spread out in front of you. Okay, so we take the hand – flinging around here, right? And then go this way, so it's 30 feet from me. As I run, this hand gets further away, right? Because it's no longer a diagonal. Right. right? And then it gets closer again. But we just we just get rid of it then. And we just go <laughs> up the gun. <laughs> Touchdown. Did you, just, did you just argue with me with geometry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Triangle. Yep. Triangles. <laughs> I don't know how to make a triangle. <laughs> you, you belong in the instant, sir. That is unquestionable. Okay. How do you make a triangle? There. You know, you're, you're not wrong. I mean, it works. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> All right. So, I'm assuming you're going to start by conjuring it as far away from you as you can. Yeah. So we're here, gonna 30 feet up here, gonna just going to wave it around a little bit, and then go this way. Yeah, just yeah. wave it around so there's a hand, okay? Alright, well, I'm going to start getting some, uh... Um, you are watching carefully from your kind of position, you're kinda, you guys are kind of hiding behind a tent and kind of peeking around the corner there. Um... Much to your frustration, but not really to your surprise as you think about it. Um, the gruel don't seem to be super observant or attentive. 
Um, so you do manage to get a few, the attention of a few, and they're like watching it and like looking around. Um, one or two of them even start approaching with sword, spears, very large war hammers, other various um, weaponry drawn. Um, so you've drawn the attention of a couple. It wasn't quite what you were hoping for. Um. Hmm. <laughs> one of them. Uh, um, it's a, a small goblin comes over and it kind of has to jump to reach where it is in the air, but it just, it, it gives the best leap that it can and it starts swinging in the general direction of the hand. I start taunting said goblin. <laughs> <laughs> so as it's swinging, you kind of start dancing the hand, like just up out of reach, like just high enough to where you can see about how high it can jump and it, it can't get up there. Um, it doesn't take long, um, and this goblin is livid, um, and it starts just shouting um, all sorts of generally un un unseemly and obscene things um, <laughs> at this hand. Uh, you see as kind of a, you'd assume he's a little bit of a dull-witted ogre, comes over and tries to help, and he like does this thing where he's like watching it, watching it, and then just poof. Um, and as you keep kind of dancing the hand out of the way, um, now, now you're thinking you got some more attention. Yeah. Overall. Now, that some of the, now that some of the uh, creatures here have been uh, trying to engage with it and aren't having much luck. Um, just to see how this plays out, why don't you give me a dexterity check to determine how well you're able to move this hand around and dodge basically dodge the incoming attacks of these various cruel okay 16 16 nice yeah no it's it's not really a problem they're they're pretty perplexed and you're able to just keep it just out of reach every time um, from one creature or another um so yeah you've got you seem to have a pretty good distraction going um they don't seem to be catching on quite yet to what's what's going on here. So I'm just going to slowly start moving it to the side. Okay. Um, you do so. Wow. Just going to say, you're lucky I'm rolling really badly tonight. Yes! <laughs> um, yeah, no, they're... They're just following it straight up. They're they're angry. They just whatever this stupid little thing is that's fluttering around in their faces, they want to take it out. You thought my idea was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so shall we keep moving forward? Alright, let's do it. Alright, well, now I'm thinking now that you guys have kind of stirred up a little bit more attention, um, let's go ahead and get another stealth check from both of you, and I'm going to say go ahead and roll with advantage on this, which means roll... Roll nice two, take the higher. Take... Yep. Good, because the first <laughs> the one was a one four. Was a 19. <laughs> My first one was a four. Plus two, so 21. <laughs> and 16. All right, not bad at all. So that's a solid 37 while I'm still riding his back. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I just just to clarify, you don't add those numbers, but it's fine. You said we had advantage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> self-respecting DM, I'm just gonna ignore that. <laughs> don't make him spit out his tea all over his webcam over there. <laughs> So you guys do you start managing to sneak into the tent or uh, not into the tent sorry um, into the camp a little bit further um, and you I mean several of the gruel are very heavily distracted you don't seem to be drawing any attention at all um, so far so as you guys start to sneak your way deeper in you're going very slowly moving you know kind of ducking behind tents and stuff um, tough to do in broad daylight uh, but you guys are managing it and the distraction seems to be going a long ways um, you do, as you kind of get around some of the, the tents and things, you do start to see um, what this activity was. And it looks like, um, in context, there's just a gr group of gruel um, all kind of circled around um, 
two combatants. Um, looks like one is a Viashino, the other one is a little goblin, um, that are just hashing it out right now, um, full on fisticuffs uh, in this, this in the midst of this little circle of gruel. And of course, everybody outside is rip his head off, get him, come on, you can hit harder than that. You know, various various things of that sort. Uh, being shouted from the crowd all around you again doesn't really appear that anyone's noticed you guys as of yet. Wait, so I'm a I'm a high elf, so I'm pretty tall, right? Fairly, yeah. Typically, elves would be uh, in around the six foot range. So, and how tall are these like Goliath things or the ogre things? The ogres probably a good eight nine feet, give or take. My character's seven foot three. If you want to know, if you're, that accounts into it at all. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what you're scheming about, but. <laughs> well, he's well, a wizard, so there's always something up there. Right, right. I have a spell that's disguise self. So okay. I'm, I'm thinking, I disguise myself as one of them. And then I just get in there, rip his head off! Yeah! <laughs> and then we just kind of see what's going on. <laughs> I mean... More than, more than welcome to do so, if you would like. So can you, that just disguises you, or can you disguise it's just me, me, too? Yeah. yeah. Just him. I can seem one foot shorter or taller. So, right. one foot taller, um, then I'm only like a foot shorter than them. You'd, yeah, you, you'd, you'd seem like a little bit of a... a like a bit of a younger ogre. Ogre, yeah. You could you feel like you could make it. You feel like you could... Let's go for it. A passable version of it. All right. So, let me just... I'm grabbing the spell here real quick. Um, yeah, Okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you cast the spell, um, and you, um, plus A, you see next to you your elf companion suddenly appear much larger, um, well, about a foot larger, but he, he kind of fills out um, pretty significantly. Uh, for a moment, you're worried that his, his like, extra bulk is going to run into you, um, but then you do notice that the, the part that appears to be this large, muscular ogre arm, um, you just it just kind of passes straight through you um, as it is. <laughs> illusion but you are disguised you you are a pretty passable ogre at the moment all right so let's let's get in there and start chanting with the crowd i mean right. you can i still well i mean yeah me duh <laughs> i'll just be you just you just here. go raid a tent or something do the non-fun stuff okay all <laughs> right i'm gonna go raid a tent i guess then <laughs> All right, so you get him in the throat! <laughs> in the midst of the, the crowd, Zardu, and your shouts just join with the rest of them. Um, it seems nobody, I mean, they're, they're into the fight. They, they couldn't care less about one more person joining the crowd. Um, so you, you kind of jump in the middle of that. You're watching. Um, <clears throat> the the Viashino clearly has the, the edge and strength, but the goblin is is quick and he's agile. Um, and every time the, the Viashino goes to throw a punch, this goblin is dancing around him. Um, and he is up on, you know, he's hopping up on the Viashino's back and like pounding him from the backside uh, and trying to like wrap him in a headlock kind of thing, which is really rather comical to watch as a tiny little goblin's like trying to latch onto the neck of a lizard. Um, it's. <laughs> You actually come to understand the gruel just a little bit better in this moment as you're watching this rather comical spectacle. Um, so, Plus A, you are heading for one of the tents? Yeah. Okay, just going kind of for whatever's closest? Yep, that works. Okay. All right, so you um, dip your uh, dip inside the first tent that you, the tent that you see. Um, nobody's inside, thankfully, uh, as you do so. Um as you're looking around, go ahead and make. Well, what do you want to do in here? What's your What's your goal? What are you doing? Uh, search around, see what's here. Okay. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. Okay. 
Oh, it's not good. Seven. Okay. Um, you're poking is around. Tent. Um, there is a lot of, uh, you know, there's um, hide skins, kind of like a rough bedroll kind of thing. Um, the stench is awful in here. Uh, you see, you know, some bits of, of food, a few bones that have been picked clean, um, presumably from an evening meal the night before. Uh, there is a rather raunchy looking chamber pot beyond that not much of anything all right in this tent at least all right i'll go back up and go to the nearest tent i guess okay um you do that i am gonna say um go ahead and give me let's make it one more investigation check and then we'll kind of re-up your stealth here. 14. 14, okay. All right, so um, <clears throat> you're, you're sneaking around, a um, little concerned that you're not being as quiet as you were before, um, but it's tough. I mean, the, the, the stuff that's scattered around this place, it's, it's kind of getting hard not to draw attention there's a lot of activity just you know in general around in the camp um you make your way into another tent um and it, you see here um <clears throat> a lot of the same things that you saw in the previous tent um you also find um what looks to be just a very simple um Nicely made, but you know, not not particularly elegant in its design. Um, a little leather satchel um, that's sitting in the corner of this this hut. And as you kind of rifle through it a little bit and look at um, the contents, um, you find a map, um, and then a few other things that look like um, there's some hardtack in there. There is. Um, what appears to be some sort of little like totem or charm or something um, that looks like it's made from a, a combination of you know different a couple different animal bones um, and just other little trinkets um, looks like some sort of like wooden or porcelain beads um, that are a part of it too a couple of bird feathers some little pieces of skin it's it's just this awkward little um, totem that's tucked inside this bag. Okay, I'll uh, take the map. You do so. Anything else you'd like to do in here? Um, no. No? Okay. All right, so, Zardu, you are watching the fight. Um, <clears throat> after a while, you can tell the the goblin's been doing really well, you know, keeping out of the reach of the Vish, you know, but you can tell its energy is starting to finally wear down. Um, as it's, you know, trying to dance away from a few more blows, finally the Viachino does manage to catch it in its claws, um, and as it does so, the poor goblin takes a vicious beating as he just gets clawed across the face and then thrown down into the dirt, and the Viachino actually manages to, like, stamp on him a couple times, um, before the goblin rolls back out of the way. Um, starting to think this fight might be getting towards the end of its, uh, course here. Hmm. Let's wait to see what they do next. You're just gonna hang there? Yep. Okay. All right. What are you doing next, Posse? Uh. Maybe I'll raid another tent. I guess <laughs> there's nothing else going on. I'll go see if I can find anything else. All right. Go ahead and give me one more stealth check. Okay. Oh boy. Ten. Ten. Um, so as you're uh, exiting this tent, you're trying to, to move as quietly as you can, and you kind of you can like push the, the flap away, um, and you peek outside. Uh, the coast seems clear, but as you go to step out, you didn't realize you didn't check the other direction. Um, and as you, you step out, you hear um, <clears throat> kind of a squeaky little voice. Hey, who are you? 
Um, you didn't see anything. <laughs> it's, it's a goblin um, that's that's standing there in front of you, and as you're watching, it pulls out a spear and it starts to approach you. Um, the spear held out in front of it. Dang it! I know exactly what I would do, but I'm not there, so I can't do it. <laughs> and I'm probably too far away for you to see me. I'm guessing. Um, yeah, he's busy watching a fight right now. He's enthralled. Yeah, I figured. Um. I fill him in on our mission and see if he. I. I, 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 I what? <laughs> no, do what you want to do. I. I. Do I, do what like, you do. I, I, I. Yeah, I don't know. Um. At this point, he is. He is. He just shouts. Intruder! And he is jumping at you with a spear, so go ahead and roll initiative for him, please. Alright. Oh, snikies. <laughs> 20. 20. Wow, nice. Thought I rolled high. Jeez. Alright, so. Um... Just one swift motion. To the throat, to the ground, dead. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So you actually do manage to move. So what would you like to do? Um, swing at him with my mace. Okay. You can go ahead and do that. Make your attack roll. So now that I think about it, they'll definitely like believe my disguise longer if I go Seven. and attack him. Oh no! Wait. Am I looking? Oh, let's. Looking at the wrong thing here. You're good. 16. 16 to hit. That is definitely a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. Eight. Eight, nice. So you, um, the goblin lunges at you with a spear, but you manage to just kind of start to sidestep it, and you bring your mace up, and you connect with the side of this poor goblin's head, uh, and it just, I mean, it's a mess. He did. It did. <laughs> it did. Yep. Um, you do manage to take it out quite swiftly, um, and it drops to the ground dead. Um, however, you do see from around the corner of a tent... Um, uh, another Viashino lizard creature um, seems to have heard the goblin shout, and it comes charging around the corner towards you as well. It in here real quick. Um, so it's going to run over towards you, and it is going to actually attempt to. Um, it pulls up a club, and it's going to attempt to hit you with that. Um, and then it's going to, sorry, I dropped my marker here. Um, I'll find it in a minute. Um, <clears throat> attack you with its um, club, and then it's also going to come at you with its shield. So the club attack first is going to be a 23 to hit. 22 oh. to hit, sorry. Jeez. I'm imagining hits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 18 on the die. Good so. thing my armor class is a 37. <laughs> 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 yeah, nice try, wizard. <laughs> All right, so that deals um, not, not terrible as minimum damage. Only three points of damage on the first strike there. Okay. Um, and then it also it has a shield in its um, other hand that is just, I mean, it's covered in jagged bits of metal and nasty spikes and things, um, and it's going to then try and follow up and swing that at you as well. Um, but that one was only a seven, which I'm sure does not hit. No, it does not. Okay, so it it swings and you're able to just kind of duck out out of the way of that particular strike. Um, Aaron, why don't you go ahead and give me a perception check? Uh, 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 Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, you did hear it was a little faint to, to hear over the um, sounds of. 
um, fight that's now dwindling down and the, you know, the various shouts of the people watching. Um, but you did just faintly hear somewhere behind you um, the sound of uh, a high-pitched squeal of intruder. You kind of look around for a second. It doesn't seem like anybody else has noticed. Um, but you definitely just faintly. Mm, then it's so not a problem. You, Nathan, you're at the top of the initiative. <laughs> <laughs> um, gonna go with the mace again. Go for it. Oh, two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nope. Um, you, you try and kind of follow up your your previous swing to hit this lizard poke that's now charged in and hit you, um, but it manages to duck out of the way of the strike and. You don't connect with it. Is that even uh, um, it ducking out of the way rather than him just, like, getting wind? <laughs> like, just <laughs> missing? <laughs> All right. So it is going to follow up. Um, same thing again, going with its club and its shield. Um, it is going to be... What is your armor class, Nathan? 18. 18? Okay. Um, it misses with the club this time, but it does manage to connect with the shield. So that is again only another three points of damage. So it's trying. Okay. You, you're you're not quite totally getting out of the way of the blows, and your armor is helping a little bit, uh, but it is catching, just kind of nicking you here and there, and it's really frustrating um, with the way it's catching you each time. So that'll bring us back to your turn. As a quick side note, you're not doing anything, Zardu. No. Nope. Okay. That's fine. Just watching the fight go down. And not this, not this one, but the other one. Right, the other yeah. one. <laughs> I got you. I win. All right, Plase, we're back to you. All right. Uh, go at it with the mace again. Okay. Yep. By all means. 14. 14. That is... Oh, wait. Two hit is plus five. Sorry. So what was so the total then? 19. 19, yes. Absolutely. That'll hit. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, seven. Seven, nice. Um, so you, as much as you guys have kind of doing the tango with each other, trying to get a good hit, and you do see as it's it's kind of maneuvering around to try and, um, as it kind of got the shield uh, strike in on you, it left itself open, and you get your mace up in there and <clears throat> do some pretty good damage, um, crashing it into the side of the lizard folks' torso. Um, not dead. But you you did some did some damage for sure. Um, that'll bring it back to its turn. It's also going to attempt to swing at you again. Um, it was sixteen. Your armor class. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. This time um, you're able to just glance both of the blows off of the armor, club and shield. You just nope, not an issue. Um, you bat both of them aside. Um, and it's your turn again. All right, Mace has been doing me for some good, so yeah. uh, total is 20. 20, yeah, that'll hit. Go ahead and roll your damage again. Okay. Max, nine. Nice. Whew. You really managed to put a hurting on this thing this time. Um you kind of let your armor take its blows the, la the last time around, um, and as you kind of as he kind of throws himself off. Whoops! Don't worry, I'm just killing my dungeon master screen. It's fine. Um, <laughs> as it uh, is, you know, it kind of throws itself off balance with with its strike. You manage to follow up with the mace one more time, and now you crack it across the back um, pretty hard, and it you you hear the the air kind of wheeze out of its lungs as it takes a, a pretty brutal hit. Um, it does recover quickly though, and it's going to whip around, and that club is coming straight for your face this time around. Um, and it does manage to connect this time with both of those strikes. So that's going to be. Ooh, yikes, a total of 14 points of damage. Oh my goodness. Yes. I am assuming that's more than you've got, isn't it? Yeah, I've got Stone's Endurance. Yes, and that would be, you would be able to absorb. If you would like to use that now, by all means, feel free to do so. I believe you roll a d12 and reduce the damage by that much? Yeah, I think so. Nat 12. 
please. Oh, 12 plus your, your con modifier. Oh. Let's see, what's my con modifier? Um, four. Four, okay, so you only take 10 points of damage. Okay, well, that's, I'm down then. You're still, in, it's still enough to take you down, okay. Yeah. Um, so you take the damage from the, the club and are rendered unconscious. Um, in the meantime, Zardu, the fight has, has finished. Um, the goblin made a valiant attempt at a comeback. Uh, it managed to pick itself up off the ground. It was scrambling all over that lizard. At one moment, it pulled a knife, um, and it, yeah, you know, it just drew more bloodlust from the crowd. Um, but the, the lizard folk of Ishino was able to bat it away um, and just managed it to, to pin the goblin down after that. Um, so the fight has kind of come to a, a swift end. Um, but as it does so, uh, you see another Viashino come running off from the side. And uh, it comes, you know, kind of in the midst of the crowd. And... Intruder! Intruder! I knock him out, he's over there! Um, and the crowd suddenly, uh, their attention shifts radically. And several of the creatures go running over. Um, and they drag the familiar form of your friend, Plasse, um, back over to this area. He looks rather bloodied. Like, he just took some pretty bad hits, and he doesn't seem to be conscious. Of this. I mean, I can't really give up my cover yet, so I'm just going to run over there and, like, lean down and just, like, start smacking him. Okay, I'm gonna say, <laughs> go ahead and make a deception check. Uh, yeah, go ahead and make a deception check. Um, also be aware that your friend is in really bad shape, and you hitting him is probably not gonna make things better. Well, I got a ten, so. Okay. Um, as you're you're over there doing that um uh, several of the the group of the gruel there just laugh and kind of cheer you on again um but one of the ogres marches over and um <clears throat> actually goes to to as you're like mid strike um actually catches your arm and everyone kind of gasps as his rather large kind of uh, meaty hand wraps around what should have been your ogre like wrist um Whoops. only to pass through said wrist and actually grab a I get my little flimsy <laughs> yeah it is i mean this this hand is huge it's enough to basically like your whole arm your whole forearm is encompassed by this thing's hand and it just starts to pick you up um and and it's just kind of holding you there in the air and it looks to everyone else's perspective it must look terribly awkward because there's this ogre that's kind of like hanging in a way that doesn't make any sort of sense, but you are just kind of dangling in the air now. Uh, and the illusion can't quite compensate for the fact that the ogre should be standing on the ground in this <laughs> Who are you? It, it breathes. My name is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you are what? <laughs> Um, I come from the uh, the high class citizens that are uh, the is it. Uh, yep. This is garbage, and he throws you on the ground, um, and you take um, three points of bludgeoning damage as he just very ruggedly tosses you down into the dirt. There, um, he he walks over. Um, I'm gonna say, go ahead and make a concentration check for a disguise self to keep it up. Just kidding. T uh, disguise self is not concentration. You don't need to do that. It doesn't require any of your attention or focus to keep the spell up. So never mind. I was thinking it was. Um, so now, yeah, you just look like an ogre laying down in the dirt. And now, yeah, I mean, the gruel are beginning to surround you, and there's some much more sinister chuckling going around. Uh, no, than there was a few moments ago. So hear me out. Hear me out. Oh, boy. 
I don't know which of you have heard about this, but there's there's this movement going on about a uh, what it was like like a peace treaty basically between it's a, like a guild pact, right? Yeah, I mean, from what you know, it, this is it's not really a formal. Um, it's not really a formalized thing like the Guild Pact is because you do have, um, and you guys did talk with Chipretnia about this a little bit um, just in passing the day before. Um, there is a Guild Pact in place in the form of Jace, the Planeswalker. Um, but this is just kind of like a, a little side project that the Selesnia have started um, to get the guilds like working together on things. It's kind of, you know, a lot of, especially the higher ups in both of your guilds, um, from the impression that you guys got about the, the way people viewed the project is kind of like, ah, the Selesnia are at it again. They're trying to get the, you know, the people to cooperate, yada, yada, yada. Everybody's happy and peaceful, whatever. Um, so it's, it's been met with a lot of skepticism overall. Um, but the idea was just to get the guilds working together on various projects and things again. I, I'm a representative. I'm here to spread the message, not cause any harm. Not cause any harm. This one, and he's pointing down at Plasse's unconscious body, killed one of ours. You call that not cause harm? He's a dumb brute. I am an intelligent wizard. <laughs> you're Rude. not helping your case, Elf. No, not Elf. He doesn't know you're an Elf. You're not helping your case. You ogre kind like us, no? No. Yeah, just oh. get rid of it. All right, you you drop the disguise, Elf. Um, argh! Deceiver and killer. You have no honor. I'm from the is it? <laughs> so. <laughs> is it always think they're better than gruel why should I not kill you now because then the campaign would be over <laughs> <laughs> don't break you the fourth wall <laughs> oh, I can always have you make new characters it's fine <laughs> You guys got yourselves into this mess. Without us to spread this message, our plane may never see peace. Make a persuasion check. Oh, I don't have a modifier. Fifteen. Fifteen. <clears throat> he kind of... Kind of nods for a second. Mm. Peace. Sometimes peace would be nice. We gruel have been attacked over and over again. What a great freeze frame. What happened? You hate our people. Okay. You won't. Let us be in peace. You think the city must encroach everywhere. I... Yet you talk of peace. This is the first chance that we've been able to talk with the Gruul. Anytime we've sent somebody to discuss, they've been... They haven't come back. Seems now it's eye for eye. We kill your messengers, you come in and kill us. Now we even. So you should let me go back, and I can spread your wishes to the Senate. Huh. We could. Or we could ransom you. Or I could kill every single one of you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Small is it is funny. Do you think you can take on the full might of Thog's clan? With this thumb. <laughs> Let 
let us see. See what you do to Thog. Show me. All right. I'll uh, ray of frost straight as his face. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll with advantage because he's letting you do it. So. Uh, uh. Now, okay. So the spell says the attack modifier. So I use that, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. With advantage. Good thing the first one was a four again. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. <clears throat> yep. You you get in there. Go ahead and deal your damage. Uh, uh find the right die. Hold on. Three. Three. Okay. So, you uh, you blast Thog right in the face with this ice. Um. <clears throat> As as the spell finishes, he just kind of there's there's kind of the lingering frost in the the patchy facial hair that he has, the beard freeze that I get every time I go outside. Um, <laughs> he just kind of kind of licks his lips and ah, yeah, mm, that was a nice cold breeze on a nice hot day like this. But Thog not dead, Gruel not dead. Seems is it boast is just is it boast like always. I went easy on you. With that, how can I share your message over. if you're dead? <laughs> He's gonna grab you. <laughs> He's gonna make a grapple. Um, so I need you to make either a strength or acrobatics check, an athletics or acrobatics check, depending on whichever is better, would be ideal. Uh, well, we'll go with uh, acrobatics then, since my strength modifier is zero and my athletics modifier is zero. Well, there you go. Sixteen. Sixteen. No, he, you, you try and maneuver out of the way, but he just scoops you up, and he manages to actually. Um, now that the illusion has dropped and it's got a good sense of of your your figure and where you are, he manages to basically just catch you by the back of the shirt and scruff you um, up into the air. Um, as he does so, <clears throat> he leans over to, or looks over at some of his companions and says, Oh, all right, grab the other one. We're going to make some coin off of those Selesnia fools this time. <laughs> um, with that, they, they drag you both off. They tie you up. Um, <clears throat> you guys basically get tied to posts. Um, after a while, plus A, you, you come about, um, you can take yourself back up to one hit point um, <clears throat> and you are currently tied to a stake in the middle of a girl camp awaiting whatever plans they have for you next I'm tune in next week to find out <laughs> what did you do you idiot <laughs> what did I do what did you... how did you make this you're the one that killed one money? of them he came at me, okay? You didn't have to kill him. Well. You, you see that thing? That thing was like a sixth of your size. <laughs> you fat oaf. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys um, pass the ne next several minutes bickering and arguing. Um... <clears throat> It doesn't take long, however, before um, the general heat in the air starts to kind of get to you, and you find yourselves <clears throat> with parched throats, um, feeling a little worn down. Um, you both took a little, a little bit of a beating um, from the the morning's event so far, um, <clears throat> and after a while, you see several of the gruel have kind of been. Um, and you're going about doing various things. Many of them just kind of got back to their business, um, whatever that might be, <clears throat> after they they managed to wrangle you guys and, and get you rounded up. Um, there are a few, however, with Thog in the lead, who come back over after a while. Um, <clears throat> they heft you uh, basically onto their onto their backs. It's very like Merry and Pippin with the orc style, um, and they start carrying. You very easily, um, Zardu, uh, 
Laplace, they kind of have to drag you along behind them for the most part, um, since you're about the same same height as they are, same size as they are. Um, but they do manage to just kind of start to lead you guys off, uh, roughly in the direction of. You cut out roughly in the direction of what? It toward towards the city. You guys are, oh, are headed okay. in towards the city, and I think. Right about there might be a good place to, to stop for the evening. Yeah. Good place to stop, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, how you feeling, guys? Not good. No you bueno. Better than ever before. <laughs> That'll happen. My stealth was so good, and then all of a sudden, no. Yep, and then no. Uh, when you're walking through a camp of enemies, you're actually lucky... I was running several dice for each of those stealth checks to see if any of the gruel were paying attention, and they were just not. Like I said, I was <laughs> rolling very low. So it'll happen. You'll have your lucky times and your unlucky times. Um, yeah. As a note, and I didn't do this just for the sake of it's no fun, and we'll you know carry this on going forward. Um, typically, when you are rendered unconscious by damage, you would start making death saving throws, Nathan. Right. Uh, yep. For anyone. Um, I just waived it for the sake of storyline in this case, um, and because you guys are new to the game, so I'm not going to punish you by killing your character outright in the second session. Okay. Um, <laughs> but just something to keep in mind moving forward. Uh, right. Other, other situations might not be so friendly to you, and you might end up going down. But you did take, that was a pretty brutal um, final sequence of hits from the from the lizard, the Biashino. Yeah. Yeah, sure. so... Um, the chaos card which i think did you drop it in the chat yet aaron oh no i forgot to grab the link nathan you want to do that oh it, it's it's in our uh, yeah chat but discord my camera to... is discord so yeah i've got it so yeah if nathan will drop that in the chat real quick the card itself was hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on <laughs> Your yeah, your bot just now deleted it. it, so... Please excuse us while we have technical difficulties. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so you guys can follow up the link. The card is um, High Alert, which is an Azorius-themed card, um, hence the uh, little little intro there. I'm immediately getting the, the first taste of what it's like to integrate Chaos uh, into a storyline, because I was like, all right, they're in the Robo Belts. Uh, what's going to happen next? And I was like, I'm going to draw a new plot card. Oh, Azorius, they work okay. All right, so the Azorius have something to do with this now. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be interesting moving forward. It's going to be hard to kind of get the balance, and it's it's admittedly really hard to prepare when I have no idea what's happening yet. Um, yeah. It's nerve-wracking to have to kind of go week by week. But If it makes you feel any better, you it doesn't seem like that's the case. You're, you're well, doing you. a pretty good job at it. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> cool well um i hope you, everybody who's watching has enjoyed it um you can check it out on zilmi's youtube channel uh, if you aren't able to catch the whole stream um it'll be getting loaded up there sometime in the next few days i'm assuming whenever he has time i'm contemplating uh, actually doing a restream on twitch at some point as well um oh, cool. maybe even doing episode one and two right back to back sure. um yeah. uh, so i'll look into doing that nice um, as a note, as I said, we're working on, uh, hopefully the audio quality was better this time around. Um, if it's not, just let us know. We'll do whatever we can to get it fixed. You know, our goal here is to, to make this a fun show and, and, you know, we want all of those little technical buggy things out of the way so that everybody can enjoy it. So let us know. Um, we'll do our best to get those things. Use the hashtag chaos reigns on Twitter. Let us know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you like it, share it with your friends. Let's get some more people to give us feedback. We'd love to hear from you. I do want to comment. I don't know if you guys saw this. Um, we, I, I've been seeing the webcams freezing a little bit occasionally here and there, so I apologize I, for I that. that. I think it's once, probably yeah. our internet somewhere along the lines doing that, um, which there isn't really much we can do about. Right. Again, doing the best that we can with the relatively limited stuff that we have on hand but we've got some ideas rolling we're gonna you know be adding some different aspects to the game that hopefully will make it all the more exciting moving forward yeah with that 
Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week. All right. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, myself, uh, I just want to comment on this. I won't be in town Thursday or Saturday, so I won't be following my stream schedule. So, yeah. I'll also be saying but that we'll on be Twitter. back next week. We'll be back next right. Tuesday. Yeah. With the yep. Oh, actually, now I can't stream on Monday either. So I won't be streaming again probably until next episode of Chaos Reigns. Um, well, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Alrighty.